Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Josh and welcome back to another FTB Quick Tips. And today I'm here explaining how steam boilers work. Now these are really simple, but are really kind of complicated in a way. I don't know, I, I had a lot of confusion with it when I first started. So I guess let's just jump right into it. So you guys can see here, I have one that's ideally set up and we'll get into how that works in just a second. But I'm gonna go over here and we're just gonna start off explaining what this is here. Now the first thing you're always going to need for these are the solid fueled firebox. Now you have two kinds, you have either a solid or a liquid. Now the solid means it's going to be fueled by any kind of solid fuel as in wood, uh, coal, any kind of stuff like that, while liquid is any kind of liquid fuel as in like biofuel, fuel, uh, creo, 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 fuel, and uh, biofuel, biofuel, you guys get it? So. You place these down and you can add fuel to it right here with water over here. You always need water in these boilers, we'll get into that in a second. But the second thing you need are either this, the low pressure boiler or the high pressure boiler. Now, the low pressure and high pressure is really just dependent on how much, obviously, pressure can hold. You can see if I have the low pressure here, it can only hold 16,000 while the high pressure can hold 32,000 at base. So it's also just an advantage having the high pressure. Now let's talk about the crafting recipes. For the solid fueled firebox, what you're going to need is some brick on the outside with a furnace and a fire charge. And for the liquid fueled, you're going to need steel plates, four of them, a bucket, two iron, a fire charge, and a furnace. Now these steel plates are made by placing steel into a plate bending machine or a uh, rolling machine with four steel. So you guys get that? So you can place them down and it's very nice. So these low pressure boilers are created by taking two iron plates, which again are an iron ingot in a plate bending machine or four iron ingots in a rolling machine. And a high pressure is a steel plate again. So that's how it works. Now here, as you guys can see, I have a relatively big one set up. So what I do here is have all my just extra fuel right here, jumping in, hoppering into this steam boiler and the coal coke all resting up here and you can see it goes about one cold coke a second it goes through very quickly as you guys can see here I have the water constantly filled and I have a bunch of steam so the amount of steam that you actually have depends on the size of your boiler so let's set up one and I'll show you guys what I mean so let's set up I guess here a solid fuel boiler like this and you can see that the same size for there, I'm going to need one, two, three by three, a nine of them. And then you want to place down either your low pressure boiler or your high pressure boiler. So high pressure I'm going to do, and the smallest one can be two stacks of it. You can see, and that's the smallest they can get. And you can see the differential here can hold 57 or uh, 576,000, while this one can hold uh, 1,152,000. So... As always, what you want to do is add water to it, and you can do water over here. I'm going to show you guys how to make a stable water system to keep it always filled in a second. But then you always want to add coal to it. So coal goes here, and you can see the temperature is going to start to increase very slowly. And if you don't have fuel going onto it, it's going to down or drop down. So let's talk about this here. This is the regular steam boiler, or the one with liquid fueled. And you can see, instead of having a slot for fuel here, it actually has two of these little tanks, and this one here actually is used for fuel. So if I were to place here, let's place a fuel bucket in there, it's gonna eat that up. It also works with biofuel, it's gonna eat that up. Now the two different kinds of biofuel, uh, it's gonna work the same, just fill up double. And of course, also this creosote, however you wanna say, oil. And you can see it's gonna start filling up and once it hits 100 degrees Celsius, that's when it starts to create steam because that's obviously the boiling point of water. So would it make sense if you were boiling or making steam at 23 degrees Celsius? But you guys get the point. So let's get into real quickly how to make a stable system to keep it filled. Now there's a few ways you can do that. You can either do it the way I have here, which is by taking a or a water source with a aqueous accumulator in it which is crafted with buckets, two glass, machine frame, two, uh, pneumatic servo, and tin. Or you can place it underneath with an aqueous accumulator. So I'm going to show you the first way, as you guys can tell. Um, you can break it out like this and just fill this in with water and then place the aqueous accumulator here. And you can see it's going to start filling up with water. And very cool. Now you can also, you can do it the way that I have over here is with a liquid duct, just going straight into it. So place a liquid duct there 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 and then a liquid duct there you can see it's gonna start filling up with water but let's talk about the other way you can do it 
which doesn't require any piping, but it is a little bit, like, it's hard to see how it works or how is it is working. So what it requires is you guys to break out underneath it. And what you want to do is place your buckets of water just underneath it like that, like that, and all around the sides, just so you have source blocks in there. And there we go. So I'm pretty confident that that's all source blocks in there. Now we're just going to place an aqueous accumulator right there. And you can see this guy is going to start filling up. So you can, you can have it like that, just filling up itself, or you can make it more stable or faster by placing more aqueous accumulators around, but you need to have it in or touching a water source. So that's how it works. Aqueous accumulators are actually pretty simple, but they need to be touching a water source for it to actually take water faster. I mean, obviously they can be sitting here and collecting water, but that's going to be much, much slower than having it in here. So. I bet you guys are wondering how you want to make or how you make power using this. So you guys can see here what I have going is kind of like a I'm having the steam take pulled out of here into this thing. Now this thing here is the steam turbine housing and what you're going to need is six of them. So a three by two and let's just break this out and I'll show you guys what we need in a second. So what you want to do is place them like that and two and there we go it turns into the housing or the steam turbine and this guy's made just by taking steel blocks and steel plates and then you want to have yourself some steam connecting to it now one pipe of steam going into it is actually only going to have an output of a smaller bit and it doesn't actually work unless you have in here a ro turbo or turbine rotor i forgot to say that earlier so what you need is three turbine discs which are made from turbine blades and a steel block and turbine blades are three steel uh, ingots but you can see it's now going to go in here and if i were to place it in there see the output it has is about 30 30 percent of the steam that's coming in so it's having a pretty low output now if we were to add a second one forgot these guys are really picky how they work if we're going to add a second one it's going to jump up to about 50 percent of steam you can see it's getting close there at our 50 percent output third one's going to obviously drop jump it up to 30 percent or 75 percent sorry and a fourth one will jump it up obviously to 100 percent so you can see it's, it's kind of staying around 34 to 35 very very constant amount and there we go and see now it's going to be outputting about a hundred percent of it so all you have to do once it has the output coming out you don't have uh, once it has the output coming out you just have it connected either to a wire or straight up to a bat box or anything that can store energy and here i have an idsu and you can see it's collecting uh, right now it has three million eu in it and it's getting about a thousand eu a tick or a second which is very 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 efficient so i say this design is relatively efficient um, if you guys have better ways of doing it I mean obviously you can fuel the steam boiler easier than fueling this guy or not steam boiler sorry the liquid one or there's different ways like I've seen people use mob traps to collect coal from wither skeletons and then have that coal jump into here and keeping this filled and I've also seen different things that generate biofuel to put this on here so if you guys want to see some videos on how some of these contraptions work just let me know and i'll do that but uh that's basic overview on how steam boilers work now of course there's a few other things you can add to it this mod is relatively big so if you guys want me to go more in depth into other things these steam boilers can do just let me know but um i guess that's what i have for you so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did could you please leave a rating let me know how i did and i will see you guys in the next one bye